project mode activated. Gotta hose the muddy anchor chain off, gotta change the oil in the engine, gotta change the oil in the transmission, gotta fill the water tanks, we have to go grocery shopping. Got lots of things to do, a little bit of time to do it. So let's go. Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Down, singing louder than the crowd Check the zinc on the engine. I have to uh, break this thing free with a, a lever arm like this. There we go. Yeah, look at that. It is gone. Gonzo, that's for sure. Wow. That's what you like to see. <laughs> That's what you wanna see right there. Nice. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad I checked that thing. All right, let's tighten this baby up. Okay, that's it. Set me up like lemonade, we both know it's bittersweet ah, This siren ass will bite your tongue, no one is forever young
water tank up. Hey everyone, I'm Parker. And I'm Katie. And this is our boat, Sea Wind. I bought Sea Wind in 2016 with my entire savings and no clue what it would take to turn her into what she is today. With the help of my dad and a few friends, I slowly tackled project after project, transforming this old boat into what I envisioned when we first met. Halfway through this five and a half year project, I met Katie and we've been inseparable ever since. In truth, this only shows a fraction of what it really took in order to get to where we're at today, in a beautiful anchorage, making this video. Together, we have come a long way. We have learned the beautiful and brutal lessons that the water has to offer. We have come to know heartache and loss and to dance despite it all. I work a full-time job on the go, which presents its own unique challenges and opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's our desire to move slowly and live fully that makes it all worth it. Sailing Sea Wind is our unique attempt at showing how we choose to live with a lighter carbon footprint how we plan to make our mark on this ever-changing world. It's a place for us to show that every one of us is connected and that we will all go further together. I didn't know it was the light, sorry. It's chilly. Yeah, I want to put it up. Oh my God. Yeah. The time had come for us to leave Delray Beach and the hospitality of our dear friends Terry and Jeannie, who are now like family to us, behind. We are so grateful for everything and thankful to have spent this time getting to know you. When we untied the lines in Ashtabula, Katie and I knew that just like our lifestyle, our friendships would also be transient. They would move on to another chapter of their life's adventure, and we would do the same. The day we left Ashtabula, they gifted us our plaque in Sea Wind that says, we have no plan and intend to stick to it. This is our mantra, the thing that we come back to when we are reading weather and wind forecasts or are tempted by sailing to a schedule. It is not easy, and it usually means staying somewhere that is less comfortable for longer than we expected, or leaving comfort behind sooner than we would have liked. In our case here, we had the comfort of a secure dock, a bedroom in a house, and excellent company. We even had a car to drive and local resources to do our boat and people maintenance. We felt ready for the next chapter of our adventure to begin. Our sights were set on Miami and meeting up with our friends aboard TRIO. It would be an exceptionally long day on the ICW, so we left a few hours before daylight with a bon voyage from Terry and Jeannie. We planned to reunite with TRIO, and after some last minute boat projects and finding a weather window, we would cross the Gulf Stream into our first new country, the Bahamas. The in tears in your eyes at every step of our goodbyes. And a rough old worn sweater You left them behind like a love letter I can make a sentence And nothing makes sense We had our moments I really Okay, we're waiting for the Camino Real Bridge. Um, we have 19 bridges today to make it down to Miami to rendezvous with uh, Janice and Andre on trio. Everyone that you see 
I'm in charge of breakfast and the dilemma is always sweet or savory, hot or cold and it's a chilly morning so I wanted to do hot breakfast and I also wanted a savory breakfast so I decided against throwing the piece of salmon in the oven and instead made egg cups so I chopped up a mushroom and a pepper and six eggs we each get three cups and so they're in the oven. They're just little one egg and veggies in a cup and they'll bake and cook. What would you call it? A quiche? No, no an egg cup. This an is an egg, egg cup. cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. So that's all. So what's the final verdict? Excellent breakfast. Yeah, it's a good breakfast. I like the hot sauce on the top. Yeah, pot. I put the chicken glue on top. They needed a little bit more, like a little kick to it. So we're about to go under the Oakland Park Bridge and what's significant about this bridge is that um, I came to Fort Lauderdale in 2018 uh, right before I went to Uganda um, and I was finishing my thesis and just needed to get to the beach. So I booked a long weekend and this is where I came. I came to an Airbnb here and yeah I walked across this bridge that we're currently going under. Thank you have a great day. Well that was a wonderful bridge tender um but yeah anyway yeah so I came here and I would walk across the bridge and see the iguanas and it was always super cool um and I had no idea that this was the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway, and till now, and I realized, wow, I was walking across this, didn't even know that I would be doing this again, but instead of walking across the bridge, I'm going under it, so super cool.
have one bridge left and then we'll be uh, heading to our anchorage for the night. It's called Marine Stadium. We're heading there in hopes to get a good spot to be able to put a lot of anchor chain out because there's a low coming through tomorrow that uh, is going to have in the upper 30 knot gusts. Uh, we could possibly see 40 knots and uh, it kind of makes Katie and I a little nervous. We've never been here before. We don't know how packed it is. It's the weekend and uh, Andre and Janice rode their bicycles over from their other anchorage uh, earlier this morning and they scoped it out. They said that there was plenty of room for us and that it looked like a good protected spot for tomorrow. So fingers crossed that uh, that's what it is. We have three miles to the anchorage and um, I can hold it. Three miles to the anchorage and um, we're coming through this inlet here so the current is about to flip. So right now it's against us and so now we're getting to the other side of the um, inlet and so it's going to be with us so that'll give us a little extra boost um in this last part of our journey to get us to the anchorage before dark so luckily in miami the sun sets at 5 52 so shouldn't get dark dark till about like it's 5 41. <laughs> well we're lucky about that I'm just gonna go get the anchor ready. Just keep us going straight, like right up here. I don't know if this is a good spot. I'm just gonna get the anchor ready. Cauliflower gnocchi that turned into mush, but we don't care. We got some salmon from the oven and a big arugula salad with tomato and a homemade sauce. Love you. We did really good today. I'm very proud of you. woken up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> I've woken up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Look, there's Miami. There were partiers on their boats right back there. All night. Like they're still going. They're still going like right now. Still going. Welcome to Miami, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Not my scene, but more power to them. Just don't do it next to our boat. We have a visitor.
Festival. I don't do this often. No, you don't. It's a good one, though. So I'm working on the computer and Katie has her headphones on and I have my headphones on and we're just like, la-ti-da. And we're like, I wonder if it's getting windy like it was supposed to today. And so she comes outside and she checks and the max gust has been 35 knots. So I, I think it's getting windy. We're in a good position now, I like this. It's starting to rain. There's some really bad thunderstorms coming. And there's still party boaters coming into this anchorage here. One after another today. It's the weekend. No stopping the party in in Miami. <laughs> this is our first big storm on anchor. I know. What were you saying about your? Like I don't think I've felt afraid of a storm in a while. Like I don't feel scared, but it's like this like like ooh, like ooh, scary feeling in my stomach. Oh man, here it comes. Glad to be in this Dodger, huh? It's actually such, you know, we said it was like really, you know, putting on a Dodger make it more comfortable. But it's not just like more comfortable as far as not getting wet or closing up the boat. It's like, holy shit. Twenty six knots right now. Holy hell. Okay, my heart's pumping now. Whoa. Huh? No, no, huh? There was an expected wind shift that happened with this system as it was passing over us, and it put exactly one boat in front of ours. It was dragging, broadside, right at our bow in winds of 50 miles per hour. I hope not. Oh, f is it dragging into us? Yeah, go. Oh my god. I gotta start the engine. The only thing that stopped it from plowing into us was the sheer luck of that boat's anchor resetting itself. Even talking about it now, Katie and I are almost in disbelief of the luck that we experienced that day. The problem though, was that it was anchored beside us now, almost within arm's reach. This boat is dragging. We're staying put.
Although it was one of our first thoughts, we weren't in a position yet to focus on re-anchoring our boat away from this boat. The other boat was starting to meander back and forth in its new anchored position. Our first goal was to fend this boat off and we actually shoved it away from us with our hands and a boat hook at first. In hindsight, we both didn't have life jackets on and I can't even imagine one of us falling overboard in a situation like this. Come back here for now. So here, so here's the plan. Okay. If he starts coming close to us, I'm going to motor up ahead of him. What I don't want to do is motor up and give our anchor slack, and then have a gust come and hook us back, and it jerk the the, the chain and maybe dislodge ours. It was still blowing, and I was hesitant to haul in any of our chain, shortening our scope. I had no clue if there would be more gusts, and our anchor was holding us firmly in place. I didn't want to do something that I'd regret. I decided to drive our boat away from the other boat in sync with its meandering. When it came towards us, I put the boat in forward and steered in the same direction as it. When I was away from the other boat enough, I put our boat back into neutral and we fell back onto our anchor. I did this a few times until the conditions improved enough that Katie took the helm. It was still blowing in the low 30s. She steered the boat away from the other boat while I hauled in 140 feet of chain and our 45 pound Rockna faster than I ever have. And we successfully re-anchored well away from the other boat. So it's about five o'clock now and we've had most of the day to process this. Uh, Katie and I have been kind of talking a lot about something like this, which we would consider a traumatic experience because there were things that were out of our control and a lot of this was a first for us. Neither of us have ever experienced that kind of and amount of adrenaline in any given moment. Um, so I guess we're lucky in some regards, but... I think being oh, at... Oh, wait, I have huh? an addendum to that. Probably yeah. the only time I felt a similar, like, superhuman rush of adrenaline is when I broke my ankle and I popped it back in place. Right. And I fell. 
Okay. But that was like a quicker boost of adrenaline. Like the adrenaline was maybe only a few minutes mm -hmm. after the, the thing happened. This was like a very long drawn out rush where I was like still in it and still feeling the crash. Like while we were still dealing with it. Right. It's a lot of firsts. We've never experienced that kind of wind, that kind of rain and that kind of anything like that on anchor. Thankfully, we're in a pr protected anchorage that didn't have any fetch build, but um, that was in itself an intense experience. I mean, it got my heart pumping as soon as that happened. And it happened like turning a light switch on, yeah. just immediate enormous winds and we clocked 50 mile an hour winds it was 44 knots and that the conversion is 50 mile an hour winds this is a screenshot of the weather that day in marine stadium january 16th 2022 in case anyone else has any stories from that day let us know in the comments it's called a squall line by definition, squall lines are a group of storms that form a line and travel together. The high winds and heavy rain from these storms tend to pass quickly, unless you're in one of them and then it can feel much longer than 20 to 30 minutes. Squalls in varying strengths are a part of life on the water, and having a strong anchoring system is your insurance plan. Having a boat drag towards you and potentially smash into you is an entirely new layer to a circumstance like this. Coming away unscathed with this new experience to call on for future situations is something that we are grateful for. You know, after something like this, I reflect back on the last six years of, you know, rebuilding this boat and I find myself reflecting back on all of these projects and in particular today, when I bought and installed the anchor windlass, the chain, the Rockna 45 pound anchor, and the swivel from Mantis that I put together. And I was like running through my memory in my mind of like twisting the seizing wire for that swivel that's holding our anchor onto the chain. And I like reflect back on that as like a, in that moment I was preparing for the worst but I had no idea what the worst was at all. Do we want to have an experience like this? No, but now we've had an experience that has taught us things and you can't get experience on anything if it's always good experience, pleasurable experience. Well, I was, I was just talking about how for like three to four days you've been like really, really anxious about this getting here, about this low coming through making sure we were in a protected anchorage, making sure that there was like enough room from other boats, you know, there were so many variables to consider. And we always say Parker is cons always considering all of the variables. But then it's this learning of, of how to walk the fine line between considering all of the variables and being anxious and causing yourself more stress than needed, being prepared. For in anticipation. Yeah, and being prepared versus like being scared, you know, or you can be scared, but anyway, I just think no matter how much we could have prepared, we couldn't have prepared for a derelict boat to come off their anchor. It's something we thought about, but we couldn't stop that from happening. We couldn't stop another boat from breaking free of their anchor and dragging and it happened and it happened to us. We looks like, I mean, we have no idea what happened back there. We have no idea what happened up there, but I mean, it seemed, you know, it happened to us and we were just on our own and we figured it out. And now we know what to do in that circumstance. And when we consider all the variables now, it's not an unknown variable. It's like a variable we're aware of. And then we know how to handle if it happens. So I don't know. I just think that's kind of invaluable to feel like you have the knowledge to keep yourself safe. It's important for me to like, now I know how to handle the helm in a circumstance like that, whether it's on our boat, whether we're helping someone else, if this happened to them. So I just think that it was kind of an invaluable experience. Mm -hmm. We worked really well yeah, together. Yeah, we worked real, made us emotional. It did make us emotional. We because shed some tears afterwards. The trauma response and also <laughs> just like the teamwork and communication it takes to like make it through a situation like that us being unscathed no one falling in the water no one getting apart stuck between boats no boats getting damaged no you know our homes 
not damaged and to keep your composure the whole time and it just it takes a really good communication and a lot of trust in each other and adrenaline <laughs> uh, the whole experience was um it's like sponsored by cortisol <laughs> and adrenaline yeah we make some banana